So next we want to look at surface area. Uh, so surface area turns out to be very closely related to arc length. And the connection comes from essentially this, this idea here of the area of, of a piece of a cone. This is sometimes called a frustrum of a cone, this, this little bit that we've cut out from the cone. Um, so there, there's a formula that you can determine for that, which you can arrive at without using any sort of calculus or anything like that for the surface area of this little piece, which is you take the length of the little piece here that you're cutting, uh, you multiply by essentially the average of the radius here and the radius there, and 2 pi, okay? And that gives you the area of this piece. And it's, it's actually fairly plausible if you think about it in comparison to if you just had a cylinder, right? If you, if you just had a simple cylinder where um, the side is horizontal rather than being at an angle, right? So if you think about finding the area of a cylinder, um, well, this is actually relatively straightforward because if you have this sort of axis of symmetry here, right? And the radius, let's say r, right? So if you snip this and you lay it flat, you just get a rectangle, right? One side of the rectangle is just going to be so that the circumference, right? The circumference is going to be 2 pi r. And if we call that length l still, right? Then the area is just going to be l times c. So it's 2 pi r times that l, right? And the only difference here is that, well, if this thing is at an angle, uh, then essentially what you're doing is you're taking the average of the small radius and the large radius um, to get the area of, of this cone section as compared to the area of a cylinder section. But it's the same idea. So you want to take these ideas, tie it into the arc length picture that we did last time, and put it all together. So remember that for, for a little segment of the curve here, right, for this little piece, um, this L, um, now we'll call that length maybe delta S. We often use S for arc length. Um, so delta S, remember that this could be given as the square root of 1 plus F prime at some, say, CI squared times delta X. And if we're kind of passing to the infinitesimal picture because we're setting up a Riemann sum we might get to a ds, so ds is going to look like 1 plus f prime of x dx, okay? All right, so that's fine. Um, now it simply comes down to saying, okay, well, that's, that's the, the length. I need the, the radius, right? And so that radius is going to be what? The radius is just going to be... In this picture here, it's going to be the distance from there to there. That's just, that's just f of x, right? Um, and again, you can you can try to worry about okay, you know, really we should have this like this average picture, right? It should just be like f at at one end of the interval plus f at the other end of the interval divided by two. Um, but if you're thinking Riemann sums, you're thinking about you know taking the limit as things get very small. Well, then these two numbers are going to be approximately the same, so we can essentially just approximate with f of x. We can get away with that. Um, and so what we we get for kind of the the area of this this strip, right? The area of that strip is going to be approximately if we're kind of working with the deltas, it's going to be roughly well the radius to times 2 pi, so 2 pi, say, f of, you know, maybe ci, right? Somewhere in there, you know, if we're looking for the, and again, we can do this, right? Um, essentially, what we're looking for here is the average, right, over the interval. We can, we can do this kind of thing again, right? Uh, f of x, 1 plus f prime of x, oh, sorry, squared there, squared times delta x. And this should suggest that in the end, we get a formula for the surface area. Once we sort of set things up, take the limit, 
you know, cut this into a whole bunch of strips, add them all up. We should get something that looks like the integral from a to b, 2 pi f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. Okay, and that's all well and good, but um, what if you're revolving about the y-axis instead, right? There, you know, you could very well be, be doing things that way. You've got your, your same sort of curve here, and this time you want to revolve this way. Right. Get something that looks like that. You can play the same game, right? You play the same game, you take a little strip, right? Length delta s, you revolve that around, and we get the little piece. And in this case, the your sort of delta area, if you like, you know, your your small bit. Um, and yeah, over here maybe we should call this like area i, right? F i, something like that. Um, you can add up all those pieces. So this time you're, you're, you're cutting things up. Um, well, here's the thing. It seems like now you should be cutting vertically. But actually you don't have to. You can still cut horizontally. You can still cut along the x-axis, right? Because you can still cut this way and get that piece of arc length, right? xi to xi plus 1, right? So you can still get that area, that sort of ith piece of the area. Uh, the thing that changes now is the radius is, is given by x instead of y, right? So 2 pi xi, or maybe somewhere in between, right? Maybe we want to write something like this for the average, right? And then times that length, 1 plus f prime some ci squared times the delta x, right? So you, you get something that looks like that. And so again, you kind of work through the details, set up the Riemann sum, you take the limit. Um, you know, we, we don't want to get too carried away. Um, but in this case, what you find when you set up the Riemann sum, you take the limit as the number of partition points goes to infinity, is this time you're going to get the integral from a to b of 2 pi instead of f of x, you can get 2 pi x, right? And then 1 plus f prime of x squared, okay? So depending on the axis of rotation, um, you have one formula or another. Uh, and of course, you could decide to use y as your integration variable, right? You could, you could go this way. You could partition things this way. You could write x as a function of y, right? Um, and so maybe we should instead say, hey, if, uh, if y goes from, say, some c value up to some d value, and we do have kind of a graph here where it's the graph of a one-to-one -one function so that we can, we can equivalently say that x must be, you know, f inverse of y. Well, then that f inverse of y, that's going to be the radius, right? Because it's x, the radius is x, right? And so you could, you could similarly get an integral from, say, c to d of 2 pi. x becomes f inverse of y, right? And then in here, when we're, when we're working out that arc length, well, we want to express it in terms of y. And, you know, remember that initially, when we wrote down the arc length, we kind of had it as like delta x squared plus delta y squared. And if you factor out the delta x, you get delta y over delta x becomes f prime, right? But you could also factor out the delta y. Delta x over delta y, that's just going to be the derivative of, of f inverse. So we could just as easily have something that looks like f inverse of y squared plus 1, and then we integrate with respect to y. You might see it looking like that. And of course, you could have the, the same thing could happen here, right? If you're revolving about the, the x-axis, like in this original picture, right? If we're using y as the integration variable. Well, now y is the radius. Uh, we express the arc length in terms of the inverse. And so you might get something up here, like the integral from c to d of 2 pi y square root of f inverse of y 
squared plus 1 dy. Okay? So the maybe the slightly intimidating thing about surface area, there's four different surface area formulas to choose from depending on the scenario, right? Um, if you're revolving about the x-axis, you've got to pick one of these. If you're revolving about the y-axis, you've got to pick one of these. You probably want to always just set things up and think about it, right? Think about what's the radius, what's the length, um, put it all in those terms. Keep in mind also that given the choice between these two, you're going to have to look at the functions involved and say, okay, which of these two is going to give me the easier integral, right? You pick the one that you know how to evaluate. Often one of these will be straightforward, the other one is going to be impossible to do in terms of elementary functions, and you end up having to do, say, numerical integration, right? Sometimes a change of view gives you something that you can evaluate.